All rise, we will obey. The International Criminal Court is now in session. Lordiansa de Corpinal International, eight award. Please be seated. Good afternoon and welcome to this status conference. Uh, first of all, can council please introduce themselves for the record, starting with prosecution? Certainly, Madam President. My name is Ben Gumpert. Sitting next to me is Sam Lowry and in the row behind Shamiso Mbizvo and uh, Hai Do Duk. Thank you. Thank you. Defence Counsel, please. Uh, my name is Stephen Kay. I'm in court today with Mr. Desterio Oyatsi, Ms. Gillian Higgins, uh, Mr. Kennedy Oghetto, and Mr. Benjamin Joyes. Thank you. Legal representative victims. Thank you, Madam President. My name is Fergal Gaynor. To my right is Caroline Walter of the OPCB. And directly behind me is our case manager, Anushka Semi. Thank you. Thank you. And today we welcome a uh, representative of the government of, uh, government of the Republic of Kenya. Please. My, Madam President and the court, um, my name is Gedu Moigai, Attorney General of the Republic of Kenya. I'm assisted by Njem Oturi, the Solicitor General of the Republic of Kenya. And with us, uh, Caroline Wamaida and Belinda Kilu, who are counsel assisting us in this matter. Thank you. Thank you very much. The uh, main purpose of this status conference today is to receive an update from the prosecution and the Kenyan government on the status of the cooperation and consultation, which was ordered by this chamber in its decision of 31st March, filing 908. And the scheduling order and agenda was issued on 4th of July, filing 929. As you are aware, an ex parte prosecution and Kenyan government only hearing was held this morning. This was necessitated by the nature of the cooperation issues to be addressed. Nonetheless, the Chamber's preference was always for as much as possible to be discussed in parties and indeed in public session. And the prosecution and Kenyan government were therefore requested to consult in advance and identify any issues which might be addressed with everyone present. As you have seen, they filed a joint submission, filing 930 yesterday evening, complying with that request and proposing some modalities, including regarding appropriate levels of confidentiality of each item to be discussed. Well, uh, but before turning into more substantive issues, I will first repeat a number of introductory matters for the benefit of those who uh, those who just joining us. First of all, as usual, in order to assist translation and transcription, I remind everyone to please speak slowly and to pause for several seconds between speakers. Secondly, the parties, legal representative and Kenyan government had also be 
requested to notify the chamber by 7th July of any additional matters they wish to raise under agenda item C. No such matters were raised, and therefore we are focusing solely on agenda items A and B. By way of background, as directed in the uh, Chamber's decision of 31st March, the prosecution and the Kenyan government have already each provided the Chamber with two written reports on the progress of the cooperation. These reports were received on 23rd May, uh, filings 922 and 925, and on 30th June, filings 927 and 928. Public or public redacted versions of three of those reports have already been issued. And this morning, the Kenyan government were requested to provide a proposed public redacted version of its filing 928. As noted in those public filings, the prosecution and Kenyan government met in May to discuss matters relating to the prosecution's revised cooperation request. At that meeting, agreement was reached on certain categories of information to be provided, and the number of points of outstanding contention were identified. It was decided that following provision of the materials for which agreement had been reached, the prosecution and Kenyan government would consider further the outstanding requests. Certain materials were provided to the prosecution in June and have since been reviewed by them. As I mentioned, the prosecution and Kenyan government filed a further update yesterday evening in the form of their joint submission filing 930. This is a public filing which notes agreement on a number of further points including the establishment of certain new timelines. It also identifies a couple of areas on which it was indicated that guidance from the chamber might be sought. These areas of difference were discussed further in the expert session this morning. It has been agreed that in this session, in this afternoon session, we will go one by one through the current status of each of the eight categories of materials requested by the prosecution in their revised cooperation request dated 8th April. We are aware that the defense and legal representative were not party to that cooperation request or um, save to the extent that counsel to the provision of certain items may have been requested from the accused, to any of the discussions that have subsequently taken place in relation to it. Nonetheless, both the defense and legal representative will have the opportunity to respond this afternoon on the basis of the submissions which the prosecution and Kenyan government will make, as well as on the basis of the public filings. My intention is that we move directly to considering the categories of requested materials. Bearing in mind that we only have uh, two hours, more accurately, one hour and 45 minutes, I would ask each council to please be as concise as possible in your submissions. In the interest of efficiency, it may be preferable for the defense and legal representative to reserve their submissions until after you have here the status of each of the eight categories of materials and then address them all together. However, of course, if you do have comments on any specific issues as we proceed, you may still make them. 
Now, the first category is what the prosecution calls company records. May I ask prosecution briefly summarize the status of this request from your perspective? And I remind you again to please be as brief as possible in doing so. Well, Madam President, for your purposes, I could be as quick as a flash by saying you've seen the document. But given that this is a public hearing, and part of the purpose is that the public should know what the business of the court is, what I propose to do is to stick, and I shall follow this procedure unless you guide me otherwise, to what I have said in that document, more or less verbatim. It is yes, mercifully please. short. Uh, the first category was, as Your Honour has said, company records. Uh, we asked the Kenyan government to identify and provide records relating to companies and other corporate institutions in which Mr. Kenyatta had an ownership interest between June 2007 and December 2010. We have not received any such records. We have received a communication from the Senior Deputy Registrar General, uh, who I understand uh, has the responsibility for the keeping of such records, who has stated that in order to issue information pertaining to ownership of companies, we need to be provided with names or registration numbers. The commentary which the prosecution make is that there is a certain circularity here what the prosecution is asking the government of Kenya, and specifically this particular registry to do, is to conduct a search focused on Mr. Kenyatta's name to determine which companies he is an officer in or in which companies he has significant shareholdings. It is our understanding that, at least in part, the purpose of the keeping of such records in the first place is to enable such searches to be undertaken. Uh, whilst open source media, Google and the like, would enable us to name certain companies with which Mr. Kenyatta is said to be connected, that is not the purpose of this inquiry, which is to obtain formal official confirmation from the Kenyan government records or the records of the Kenyan government agency as to what those companies may be. Uh, I have understood subsequently that there may be practical difficulties in terms of the searchability of the records, uh, particularly focusing on the name of an individual rather than the company name or registration number. Uh, if that is right, it may be that the resources of the OTP can be harnessed in some respect to uh, bring what may otherwise be a voluminous and cumbersome task within reasonable bounds. So those are the comments that I would make in that respect. Thank you very much. Mr. Attorney General, would you like to respond? Bearing in mind that it's open session. Save uh, <coughs> Madam President to reaffirm that we have and intend to continue cooperating within the limitations placed by the law of Kenya and within the limitations placed by the administrative, managerial and other issues that affect this. We have made it abundantly clear to the prosecution that prior to 2009, records in the company's registry were maintained manually and that therefore it is virtually impossible to conduct a search that is not restricted or referenced in the manner that we have stated to them. We have in good faith 
and I think that the prosecutor would be the first to admit we have gone beyond the scope of our initial discussions in our attempt to demonstrate good faith uh, in this respect. Now, we have undertaken that where, where specific company numbers can be provided, we will be very ready, very willing uh, to conduct a manual search of the registry. We welcome the assurance by the prosecutor that at such a point, we, he would be able to supply uh, assistance by way of officers from his office. Whereas we do not think that that would be necessary because our problem is not uh, the human resource. Our problem is the technical uh, capacity of, uh, of going through uh, the, the paper tr uh, trail prior to 2009. So uh, I think that that is clear in itself. Then. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Madam Mr. President, you did say the comment could be invited as matters are, are raised. If, uh, if uh, it's necessary for you, because well, my intention is rather, uh, if possible, to ask you to provide comments at the end of the session. But if you prefer to raise it right now. I, I do. You are, yes. while, while we're dealing with it, so that my time is, isn't left at the end, very, very brief, as I've experienced on occasions uh, in this court, having to listen to the Victims' Council. And uh, the first point I want to make, the Attorney General, who's been charged with this matter, and who is uh, 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 challenging issues of scope relevance to the case, has no idea what the case is. He doesn't have the pretrial brief, which is confidential. He doesn't have other confidential uh, materials. There's been a discussion ex parte this morning on, on matters that I wonder whether they were truly necessary to be done in my absence when I have been given uh, uh, access to the requests by the OTP to the Attorney General in a series of letters. A and I raise this matter now because it can be boldly raised, is what on earth is the relevance of company records, corporate institutions, to the PEV in January 2007. If that is what we are looking at, it doesn't feature in the pretrial brief anywhere or the DCC. And it does beg the question as to why the case is in the mess it is in and has never had evidence to support the charges as admitted by the prosecutor. Now, what is happening here is that the government of Kenya is almost being made a whipping boy to go on searches manually for documents to try and find every occasion, no matter how many uh, documents there may be within the company registrations of Companies House in Nairobi uh, to go and find these documents w without any purposive effect. Now, my concern is that these matters get discussed in my absence, matters raised. No one is able to challenge what is the relevance, but I hope this court was able to say to the prosecutor this morning, well, what is the relevance? Point me to the passage in the evidence where this is relevance to the issues of the PEV and the alleged financing of it. As far as I'm aware, there's not a single witness statement saying a company did this or a company did that or anyone was transferred shares or paid dividends uh, within the ranks of the Mungiki. 
and I put it in that sarcastic way because, Madam President, our patience is really at a an end on this matter whereby there's been an admission of no evidence and we have had to wait and wait whilst requests like this uh, are made and a whole battle of letters, applications, ex partes between this man and the OTP on what is a completely fruitless exercise and someone needs to get a grip of the prosecutor in this case and this case pointed to the exit where it deserves to go. And uh, hearing that that was the first matter, I, I apologize for my intemperate language, but it, it really is something with a case knowledge here of the people I work with uh, in relation to these proceedings. Not a single one of us uh, can track the relevance of this matter nor deal with it. Thank you. Ma Madam President, if I, if I can just say one thing. Mr. Gaynor. Um, Oh, yes, Mr. Gaynor. Just very briefly, in fairness to Mr. Kay and others, I do have about 20 minutes of submissions in terms of timing. In respect of the cooperation between the government of Kenya and the prosecution, I believe having listened to uh, just the responses to the first issue, they already confirm uh, my suspicions that we are uh, seeing the continuation of an ongoing practice of providing nominal cooperation while obstructing access to relevant documents and relevant witnesses, but I, I won't, uh, I can assure you, I very much doubt that my oral submissions on the eight categories will be very long. Uh, I, will, I will be addressing cooperation and a very short uh, piece on current security concerns of the victims under the government of Mr. Kenyatta. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, as for the uh, issues uh, raised by Mr. K, um, this morning during expert session, we had some discussions about the uh, issues related to your submissions uh, right now. And um, the chamber decided, that it was agreed that the chamber would receive written submissions on certain identified points of disagreement re relating to the uh, specificity, relevance, and uh, relevance of certain of the requests. Having said this, uh, may, I now, may I now turn to the um, second category, which is the land registry cause. Prosecution, please. Madam President, yes. Uh, there's an enormous temptation to reply to a number of the statements which Mr. Kay has made, uh, almost all of which uh, I would characterize as unhelpful. Uh, I shall try to resist it, but I'm not going to resist this. The reason why the, uh, the uh, pretrial brief uh, is confidential is because the defense asked that it should be so. We'd be perfectly happy for it to be a public document tomorrow. Now, I uh, turn to the land registry records, which are the second category. The request was for the identification of land which was transferred from Mr. Kenyatta or third parties identified under the first category to any other person between June of 2007 and December of 2010. In response, we have received nothing. We have received this explanation, that the Ministry of Land, Housing and Urban Development is in the middle of a comprehensive reorganization. Over 1.3 million files apparently have been either misfiled, misplaced or lost. The Cabinet Secretary, a lady called Charity Kaluki Ngilu, states that doing the best with the resources and time available to us, we have not located any land, title or property registered under the name of Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta. So her best answer at the moment is that Mr. Kenyatta doesn't own any land, although that is an interim answer. Uh, a, the, the comments we would make are, firstly, given this is an interim answer, when can we expect something more comprehensive? Uh, and furthermore, of course, uh, 
the prosecution is, is interested not only in land which may be held in Mr. Kenyatta's own name, but in land which is held by companies in which he may have a significant or controlling interest. Uh, and we would also like to know what government records exist and can be searched to determine whether Mr. Kenyatta or those third-party corporate entities uh, paid stamp duty or sales taxes in relation to the property transfers. Uh, so, uh, in brief, uh, the position is that we've received nothing, that an explanation has been given as to a technical difficulty caused by reorganization, that we can expect, we hope, a more comprehensive answer, and we have suggested a new avenue which the government of Kenya could and should pursue in relation to the transfer of land. Thank you. Mr. Attorney General. Madam President, uh at the first meeting we held to resolve this matter, this was not one of the matters that we were required to make any further effort as we had already informed the prosecutor of the nature of the legal process in Kenya and the management of the land registry and the practical problems that would, however, and as he admits himself, out of abundant caution and to demonstrate our good faith, we did make an effort to get an authoritative position from the relevant ministry. And the answer we got was as, fol uh, was as he has indicated. I think it bears repeating that the government of the Republic of Kenya is not, has never been a party to these cases. Sometimes it appears that assumptions are made that by some miracle of some sort, the government has become aware of what the charges are, of what the evidence disclosed between the parties are, as, as to what witnesses will be availed as to what witnesses have been dropped and other matters that by treaty are confidential to the parties. And some of this very unfortunate language that is used sometimes perhaps to achieve a collateral purpose about the government being obstructionist, as a, a, about the government not cooperating is unfortunate because this record speaks for itself. And if the prosecutor with whom we have had several fruitful engagements admits that genuine good faith measures have been made, I wonder who else not privy to those deliberations would be in a position to comment as to the quality of our engagement. I say no more for fear that uh, I I may be provoked to address the gentleman in the tone and the manner that he appears to have chosen. Number two, Kenya has never represented to this court or to any other person or authority that it will cooperate in violation of its own constitution or in violation of its own law, or beyond its management and administrative capacity <coughs> that is available to it. In the letter from the minister, she says, we are in the middle of a comprehensive reorganization of our ministry. We have discovered 1.3 million files to have been misfiled, misplaced, or lost. However, from the resources available, the name given to us, which is the specific name of an individual citizen, we have no record at the moment indicating that that person owns any land. I leave it to Mr. K to deal with the question of how that ties up to the evidence because we are strangers to the evidence. We don't know what the prosecution wants to prove or how they want to prove it, 
or how land becomes part of their case. But we are saying this. In the registries that are controlled by the Kenya government, the position is as explained to the prosecutor. We have, however, said we will subject to a question we discussed in the morning. Your order was clear. It should be specific. It should be material. We are in this embarrassed situation where we have the book thrown at us. Find out whether Mr. X owns any piece of land in Kenya. Where? In Nairobi, in Mombasa, in Nakuru, in... The prosecutor does not know. He has been investigating the case for five years. He doesn't know. I repeat now what I said earlier. If the prosecutor says, confirm to me that land reference number Nairobi Nakuru 10, give me its file and show me the transactions on that file between this date and this date. It shall be done. But the prosecutor cannot outsource to us the work of investigators. We have sufficient difficulties of our own. That's why the minister is saying, I am trying to find 1.3 files which are lost, which are misplaced. That is our position. But if we receive more specific, more pertinent, more focused, we will be of assistance. But the way it is right now, we regret that uh, our position is this offense, the rule of relevance and specificity, and we are not able to be of assistance. And I, I think I should say no more, lest I be tempted to, 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 to answer. Thank you very much, Mr. Attorney General. And I would like to take this opportunity to remind parties and participants to strictly adhere to the agenda. We have very concrete agenda items, very technical one in a sense, although it is very important. This status conference is not the place where parties and participants will discuss about the sufficiency or lack of evidence of the case against Mr. Kenyatta, or to what extent Kenyan government is privy to other evidence or some certain level of confidentiality of some document, or general security situation in Kenya. And uh, I would like to stress that please uh, not to employ too strong or provoking languages, and please avoid unnecessarily heated or um, emotional languages, and I can assure you that it will neither help this chamber nor parties and participants. Having said this, um, do you have any comments at this moment, Mr. Um, Kay? I, I, I do, Your Honour. Um, June 2007 to December 2010 is the request transfers of land. The, the post-election violence was in January 2008. The pre-trial brief makes no specific reference to anything other than cash being paid, which was a feature of the evidence at the confirmation of charges hearing. To ask the government of Kenya to undertake this work until December 2010 on an issue in which the parameters do not fit the case, in my submission, is something that should be said here. He would not know that because he's not involved in dealing with the evidence. 
uh, and the issue over the ownership of land is not the point. It, it's the transfers of land, apparently. So, Madam President, our submission is that this, A, is an irrelevant request, B, it is immaterial to the case, and the specificity is utterly lacking and shows a, a lack of due diligence in relation to the comprehension of the case. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gaynor. Simply, Madam President, I, I simply want to observe that if it is the government's position that Mr. Kenyatta, whether as a legal or as a beneficial owner, and whether directly or through his family members or through companies, does not own any land whatsoever in Kenya, there will be millions of Kenyans who will be extraordinarily surprised to learn that news. Thank you. Madam, Madam, Madam President, it is we going to be general. very unfair for us to engage in this sort of semantics. We have a record. I have exchanged written material with the prosecutor. He has sent me written material. For a speculative, if you allow this sort of pejorative language intended to attract some publicity of some sort, it is demeaning to the stature of Kenya as a state party that has come here to cooperate voluntarily. Mr. Prosecutor cannot stand there and say anybody has ever told him what is now alleged by a person who has never seen our communication. It is preposterous. And we request you, Madam Chair, to take charge of the court and allow our interventions between parties that are within the know, parties that understand what has happened, parties that have exchanged documents. If any other person wants to hold a press conference after this event, for whatever purpose, they are welcome to it. Thank you, Mr. Atujin General. Um, the third category relates to tax returns. Mr. Prosecutor. Yes. We asked. Sorry. Yes. We asked the Kenyan government to identify income tax and VAT returns submitted by Mr. Kenyatta or the third party corporate entities to be identified under the first request between that same time period. Uh, the response we received was a categorical assurance that Mr. Kenyatta is not registered for. VAT. We also received, and we're grateful for, summaries of Mr. Kenyatta's declared income and tax liabilities over two decades, 1992 to 2012, uh, together with Revenue Authority working materials for the years ending 2007 and 2008. Uh, I would comment uh, and indeed it's set out here, it takes nobody by surprise, the documents which have, we have been provided are not the documents we asked for. We asked for the tax returns. We suggest that they may be key documents which could be expected to identify business and companies in which Mr. Kenyatta has holdings and for which he received dividends or other revenues. That would be one way in which the names of relevant companies which is being asked for by the registrar of companies, could be provided. Those are all the remarks that I make in public session on that score, Madam President. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Attorney General, would you like to respond? Tax information relating to the citizen were provided in good faith from the Kenya Revenue Authority. We have explained to the prosecutor, and at some point we thought that we had concurrence on this matter. That there is a limit 
in as far as the government of the Republic of Kenya is concerned, in the disclosure of private tax and other legally protected information, and that we must work with the consent and approval of the defense in such matters. I leave it to Mr. K to comment about the relevance of tax returns to the case that is before the court, because we don't know the case. I must suffice it to say this, because I think it bears repeating. There appears to be a misplaced notion uh, that all that is required of the government of Kenya is to be confronted by a document bearing the logo and the letterhead of the ICC and by hook or crook, there will be a delivery of whatever is demanded. Let me repeat at the risk of clogging the record with things we've already said before. Kenya has a comprehensive legal system. It may come as a surprise, but it is indeed the case. And under that legal system, we, even as government, are required to comply with the law. We are not able... Mr. Attorney General, I'm yes. sorry to intervene, but I think you are repeating yourself. And uh, considering the time constraint we have, uh, please strictly okay. adhere to... I will, I'll, I will just wrap up by saying the request by the prosecutor that over and above the documents de voluntarily disclosed, he would like to receive other tax documents of any other corporate entities offends the principle of relevance and specificity. And here we must say the dog, the tail is beginning to wag the dog. We don't have the companies because we can't search them because he doesn't know them, but yet we have failed to give records of the companies that he doesn't know which we don't have. So simple as that. It is an absurd situation. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. K. Uh, Madam President, as we go further and further into this exercise, it becomes more and more uh, ludicrous because the allegation in this case was that cash was paid to finance the PEV during January 2007. The numerous references in the transcripts and documents uh, will bear that out. Uh, there has never been a suggestion that that finance, that cash, was made tax deductible uh, by the accused and subject to uh, his tax returns. Uh, we are now in embarking upon what is a fishing expedition or something that is akin to setting up the government of Kenya uh, so that it fails and carries the can. The period of June 2007 to December 2010 says it all in relation uh, to this matter. A and in my submission, uh, this court should remember why it adjourned this case, on what grounds it adjourned this case, and the reason stated by the prosecutor to get his adjournment from the trial date in February of this year. A and now a whole multitude of unrelated matters are poured into the offices of the Attorney General uh, uh, to set him up to fail. And in my submission, uh, this is not something uh, that the court should permit, along with the two previous matters we've had already, as it fails the test for this case. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gaynor. Thank you, Madam President. I observe that the government has returned to its earlier argument that incriminatory evidence relating to a suspect can only be disclosed to the office of the prosecutor with the consent of the suspect. Now, not only does that 
uh, not reflect the position in Kenyan domestic law. It does not reflect the position, in fact, in any jurisdiction that I'm aware of. It's, it's a wholly absurd position and would cripple criminal justice systems across the world. And uh, the fact that the Attorney General has returned to that is indicative that Mr. Kenyatta has got something to hide. He doesn't want certain material to be brought to your Honour's attention. If he had nothing to hide, he would be happy for this to be provided, to be provided confidentially to the Office of the Prosecutor and to your Honours. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next category is vehicle registration records, prosecution. Your Honour, let's hope that this can lower the temperature a little and be dealt with a little bit more briefly. Uh, we have received the records that we asked for, which show that between November 2007 and October 2012, there were four vehicles registered to Mr. Kenyatta uh, at the Kenyan National Transport and Safety Authority. And we thank the government of Kenya for that information. We point out, of course, that that is the records only in his own name and not in the name of any third party companies or other entities in which he may have an interest. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Attorney General, anything to respond? Madam President, uh, we are happy to have been in a position to supply that information. It actually demonstrates what we have consistently said before, where the request is specific and direct and capable of, uh, of, uh, of, of compliance, we will do so expeditiously. And I think that that particular request we were able to comply within seven days of our first meeting. Unfortunately, the prosecutor has then gone further and said, we need further vehicle registries of corporate entities. Our position is the same. Number one, this offends the principle of relevance and specificity, and the burden of proving relevance and specificity is not ours, it's the prosecutors. But number two, and more important, it is the same, same difficulty that the prosecution has created. And the prosecution is saying, we have investigated this case for five years. We came to the court and said we had enough material to have it confirmed, it was confirmed. We came to the court and said we were ready for a hearing, give us a hearing date. A hearing date was confirmed. And now the prosecution says, uh, because we have said to them, give us these names of those other corporate entities so that we do a search. And the answer is, we don't know those corporate entities and we don't know the third parties. Mr. And Attorney General, I'm sorry again to interrupt, but this issue has been already raised by you. Yes. So, so we are unable, need, we are to, unable to comply with a request that says the prosecutor does not know the entities he is investigating, but by some miracle, we should find out what those entities are and investigate whether they own motor vehicles. It's absurd. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kay. Uh, Madam President, the uh, most appropriate investigation on this matter would have been to take vehicle registrations that were mentioned in the evidence and search for them on the Kenyan National Record database. Uh, that's never been done. Instead, we were asked to supply vehicle registration numbers in the hope that something might fit. Well, it doesn't fit on the database. A and uh, this is again a reflection of the lack of direction to obtaining material evidence in this case. Uh, and I hope the court takes note of it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kay. Mr. Gaynor? No, thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Um, the fifth category is bank records, prosecution. Indeed it is, Madam President. The request was to identify accounts held by Mr. Kenyatta personally or through uh, third party 
entities, uh, the, the same proposition uh, about which Mr. Uh, Muigai, the Attorney General, and I have been in some dispute, and to provide statements between the same uh, two dates. Uh, and in response, records relating to various accounts at various banks, which uh, there is no public interest in, in, uh, in revealing, have been provided uh, between the months of, uh, well, between the 1st of December and the 28th of February 2007 and 2008, respectively. Uh, the uh, remarks I would make are these. Uh, it has become plain that as with a number of these requests, uh, and we heard from Mr. Kay just a moment ago something I was unaware of, that it was that the, the vehicles, uh, uh, the vehicle registration were provided as a result of a request made by the Kenyan government to, uh, to the defence. But uh, here, uh, the uh, records have been provided not as a result of any court order, but by Mr. Kenyatta's consent, and indeed the Kenyan government make no secret of, of that. Uh, what I have observed the uh, government of Kenya is that the OTP needs formal assurance that the accounts revealed represent the totality of accounts held, and in particular that Mr Kenyatta's consent has not been withheld in respect of any account. Uh, what's important, once again, is not for the prosecution to learn what Mr. Kenyatta says the position is, but to learn what the formal records held by the banks and the banking authorities say the position is. Uh, more technically, whilst we're very grateful for the uh, accounts which we have received in his own name, uh, there is uh, a, a need to understand the underlying uh, documentation which uh, will enable us to determine where money was coming from and going to on that score. Uh, and we've asked for personal contact with bank officers to clarify bank procedures in that respect. And uh, as your honours know, and indeed it's in the public filing, there's been uh, an agreement in principle that that will take place uh, and a timeline expressed. Um, we, are, we remain of the position that bank records for a very much longer period are necessary to enable proper comparisons to be made. And let me expand on that in about three sentences. What's been provided are the accounts for the period when the election, post-election violence was taking place. Well and good. Those are obviously some of the most important records. But in order for the prosecution and the court eventually to determine whether there is any significance about payments made during that period, there needs to be a comparison made. Uh, the court will need to be able to see, is the activity at the time of the violence unusual activity? Let us compare it with January in the preceding year or January in the following year. Uh, that is, I would respectfully submit, plainly the way in which such investigations are properly done because it enables the financial history to be put into its proper context and enables the court to see whether there is, in truth, any significance to payments made. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Attorney General. Madam President, we have a... We have availed to the prosecution what was, in our judgment, possible in the circumstances. We, however, repeat what we've said before. We are unable to provide records of third parties who are unidentified or corporate entities that are unidentified. But allow me to say this in one second. This is the first time we have encountered a request for what amounts to mutual legal assistance where the party seeking legal assistance is unable to identify the subject that he would or she would want assisted about. I have challenged the prosecutor to tell me who is this other corporate entity. And as soon as I have the name, I will look up their record. 
but we neither have the means nor the resources nor the technical ability nor the legal framework to do on his behalf the fishing expedition that he desires. 